Turn with me to Matthew chapter 5, please. I'm sorry, yeah, Matthew chapter 5. Let's stand together. The words will, the scripture will be on the screen, and I want you to read the scriptures with me. The Bible said, speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual things, and I think it would be good for you to read this with me today. Amen? And you'll be familiar with it. It's called the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes. So in, ver in verse, we'll, we'll start with verse 3, which is the red letter words from Jesus, and read it with me, please. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Thank you for reading the word of God with me. I want to call your attention to what God spoke to my heart about. And this one, there's a lot of be beautiful blessings and instruction for Christians here. But I want you to know today my sermon is going to be found from verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon the word of God as it goes forth today. Thank you for those that are gathering that you brought together. I pray that you give me clarity of mind and heart. And Lord, that you would uh, put your spirit upon this message in a special way that we can just thank you so much, God, that you are a merciful God. If you weren't, we would all be in such trouble and without hope. So Lord, I pray that as we can preach today about your wonderful mercy and your hands of mercy, that we can see fit within our own lives and hearts in the turmoil in which we live, that we can be merciful. And Lord, show mercy one to another as you showed mercy upon us. Bless this message now, I pray in your precious name. Amen. You may be seated and God bless you. <coughs> the Beatitudes are a beautiful Beautiful passage of scripture should be literally read every day. If we want to be blessed of God, he gives us the formula of how to be blessed. And so uh, I want to remind you, uh, and I want to go to Matthew chapter 6 for just a moment and show you something in Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 6. What Jesus said, instruction to us in verse 14. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Right. That's stern. God has mercy. We like to think of the grace of God, and grace of God 
defines God and who He is. It's by His grace that God has shed abroad the love of God in our hearts that we can have forgiveness. Right. But we need forgiveness, and that's what God's talking about. Our Father forgave us of our sins. Be reminded. That's what happens when you get saved. All your sins are forgiven. And your trespasses is how you've gone over the boundary of God. That's what trespasses are. If hunters know what trespassing is, if you're hunting a, a piece of property and it said no trespassing, that means you're not to cross over those boundaries. So trespasses are going over the boundaries that God said. And that's where we have most of our problem. But I, I've got news for you. If we know God's boundaries, we should not trespass against the commandments of God ever. But what happens too, you can stay on this side of the fence and not trespass over, not do things that are sinful and wrong. But there's also forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That is something you owe. And that's the sin of not doing what God would have you to do. So we've got to, we've got to have forgiveness. And aren't you glad that God forgives you? Amen. How many are glad for that? Amen. How many are glad for the day you got saved and your sins were buried in the sea of God's forgetfulness, right. never to be brought up and remembered no more ever in your past? Uh, it, God says it's forgotten as cast as a far as the east is from the west and will never be remembered no more. Amen. Aren't you glad? Now, once I said this before and it's the truth, there's only one time in your whole entire life that you're going to be absolutely perfect until you get to heaven. And you know what that time is? The very moment you got saved. Right. And when He washed all the sin away and you haven't had time to blow it yet. No. Amen? Because now your walk begins. And choices are always yours about becoming a Christian or about uh, living for God. Righteousness or good or evil, those choices are within your life. And aren't you glad that even though we blow it, God still forgives? And if God forgives us, God expects you and I to forgive others. Right. If you do not forgive those that have debts or trespasses against you, God will not forgive you your trespasses. Right. That means we'll stand with sin unconfessed and unforgiven when we stand in the presence of God. But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Right. But I never want to get to a place in my life, nor neither should you, that God will not forgive our trespasses where we cross the boundary lines where we walk away over the commandments of God and we ignore Him. Or we stand back on this side of the trespass fence and we sit silent and do nothing while the world is lost and on their way to hell. And we could have made a difference. God needs us to be on His side. Remember, He said, you either for me or you're against me. You're either gathering with me or you're scattering. And that's to believers also. And he gives us these great commandments, uh, uh, these great beatitudes to show his blessings. So it's, uh, we need to have a stern warning that, that forgiveness is so important. Now, why do we need mercy? Well... I don't hear too many messages upon mercy. We're too, we're too into grace. 
and stability. But think about this for a moment. Where would you be if God had not had mercy right. on you? Grace is something that is over us to the goodness of God. We love to think about grace and talk about it and, and praise. And grace is a wonderful thing because that's the nature of God. But when it comes to man, mercy is all about forgiveness. Mercy is what we need. Right. Nobody will ever stand before God and say, give me what I deserve. Right. Oh. Because if we got what we deserved, we'd all go to hell. Sin cannot enter heaven. Our unrighteousness, as if, if, if we possibly could live the, the perfect life of, uh, uh, in the flesh, we're born sinners with that sin vein right within our DNA. Without God, without the blood, without Jesus, without mercy, where in the world would we be? Right. right. Now, if God has mercy on us, don't you think we're supposed to be like Jesus? That we ought to have mercy on others yes. that trespass yes. against us? He gives just prior to this forgiveness. If you forgive men, your tr their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses, because your forgiveness depends upon you forgiving others. You cannot do that. And by the way, Jesus just gave us the model prayer prior to that warning of forgiveness. Right? So God knows that we're going to go through stuff. Didn't even the Beatitudes of Blessing warn you that you are going to be persecuted, rejected, have problems? If they persecuted me, he says, they will persecute you. How many of you know that Christians are not the most loved people on the planet? Amen? If you want to stir up a fight... You just let someone know you're a Christian. Right. Amen. And uh, and you know why the unsaved world feels this way? As they they feel intimidated because they think they're better than us. Can I tell you, no Christian is better than anybody else. Right. right. I will tell you they're better off than other people are. Amen. But that brings when it's like when even as we believers, when when our life isn't matching up, and and we look at the Bible and we hear preachers preach uh, messages like this, what happens? I'll tell you what happens. We get a little glimpse of what God is, and when you get a little glimpse of what God is, you see what you are, and yeah. you don't like it very much. Right. It brings discomfort. It brings deep concern. So we need to be forgiven and we need to forgive others and that's the mark of a Christian. How can Christian people not love each other? That's the very evidence that we pass from death unto life is because we love the brethren. Amen. But you see what kind of a problem we have today? The whole world out there needs anger management. <laughs> right. Amen? They need anger management. <coughs> Just the past week, a lady tooted her horn at someone and kind of cut her off a little bit, pulls up the side of <coughs> shoots a bullet through the back of her car and kills a little three-year-old boy. Why? Road rage. I've never seen such cases of road rage in all my life. 
I never dreamed that on the highways and the streets of our city that you could be shot for honking a horn yep. or blinking your lights and have someone run you down and murder your family yep. because you blinked your lights. Right. Anger. No mercy. Everything is an offense. We need to we need to have some messages upon mercy. And you can't control what others do, but you can control what you do. If you want to stay clean with God and forgiven, and you want to have God's blessings to rest upon you, especially in the day in which we live. Remember, when somebody offenses come, and you say, I'll just get even. I'll tell you, there's just no such thing as getting even. Right. And if you just get even anyway, you're no better than anybody else. You're only coming up to their level if you get even. Yep. But if you go beyond and show mercy and love and show that Christian spirit and you let the Spirit of God begin to shine because God is shining in you when anger comes out, when clamor comes, when dissatisfaction comes, when murmuring and complaining and griping, God, His light is dimmed. I just preached upon last week, God, shine the light of Your countenance upon us that You can be seen. But we don't want to look like the world. We don't want to act like the world. The world has no mercy. God is all about mercy. Just think of God giving you what you deserve. And you know what? A lot of you you relate to this because no Christian's perfect. We've all made mistakes. And when you do something wrong or you cross one of those boundary lines or you fail to do something God laid upon your heart, that Spirit of God within begins to convict you, make you feel bad about it. What do you do? You've got to turn to God and feel good about it, make the right, right decision, right? We don't get angry and, and let vengeance come out. God said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. Amen. If you get vengeance, God will get you. Um, but if you let God get the vengeance, it'll be worse than they would have ever experienced. So God says it's better if anyone harms one of these little ones of mine, it were better for him that a millstone be tied about his neck and drowned in the depths of the sea. Right. Than to hurt a little child of God. Yet God turns around and says, You're going to be hurt. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to be let down. And especially when it comes, the people like to blame God for everything. Yeah. You know? Yeah? See, it's funny. They either blame God or they blame the devil. Nobody wants to take personal responsibility. Right. But I want to tell you what the problem is, is that when you see, when you look in the mirror, that's the problem right there. Right. And so we gotta, we, we've got to look into the Bible to see God. And when we look into the Bible to see God, we rise above that forgiveness and love. That the countenance and the love of God can shine on us. And they said, wow, you will have so much more love and respect for yourself and for God. And it will shine right. like a diamond. When you can go above and beyond, when trials come and hardships come, and you can still smile. And when you can handle things the right way, God will bless you. He will magnify. He will lift you up. 
He will let the countenance of His light shine in you. He will let the glory of God rain down upon you. He can open up the windows of heaven. He can make even your enemies to be at peace. That's right. He can give you peace in your heart and in your mind that you never dreamed you could have. That's how our Lord is. Matthew chapter 9. I, I love Matthew. He gives us a, a lot of things. But in Matthew chapter 9. <laughs> verse 35. Jesus went all about the cities and villages. Teaching in their synagogues. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And healing every sickness. And every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Jesus wants us praying for laborers into His harvest. Man. If you'll notice in the Bible, those that prayed for the harvest were the ones that went into the harvest. They're the ones. If you pray about something, you're going to have a burden. Man. Pray for the harvest. That's Jesus Christ's personal prayer request right there. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 20 for a moment. In Matthew chapter 20 verse 30. Through 34. It says, And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. The multitudes rebuked them because, the, uh, because they, uh, they should. Hold their peace, but they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still. The cry for mercy stops Jesus in his tracks. Amen. He wants our cry for mercy. When two in the service went to the altar, one was a, a Pharisee, a hypocrite. There was an old, just an old public, just an old sinner. They both came and they both prayed their prayer at the altar to God. The one cried, Dear Lord, I want to thank you. I'm not as others are. I tithe and I, and I keep the commandments. I'm bragging on himself to God. And the old, the old sinner just smote his breast and said, Dear God, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. Right. The Bible said the one that cried for mercy walked out justified while the condemnation of God rested upon the hypocrite that thought they were so great yeah. and bragged about it to God. Jesus had compassion. The Bible said he had compassion on these blind men and he touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. The mercy of God is a wonderful thing. I've had this upon my heart for a long time and the, this past week as I was Going through some of my, some of you know, some of you don't. I've been playing the harmonica. Okay, <laughs> I've gone from one song to fifteen. I have now that I can play. I'm getting better. <laughs> I was just fooling around with some beautiful chords, and God gave me, gave me this little chord. Man, that is catchy, nice. So I wrote a hymn. Uh, Matt put the words to the hymn up, if you will. This is my new song. 
And don't you scavenger it either. <laughs> <laughs> I had this upon my heart. I guess it's dangerous to put it on the internet too, but it's it's not gonna make me rich, but it made me rich in my heart when God gave me this. It's entitled His Hand of Mercy. I just got the three choruses, the verses would be coming. I can see his hand of mercy as the Savior reaches down. Pulling me from sin and sorrow, where on earth no hope was found. I can see his hand of mercy as he leads me every day in the path that he's preparing so that I will never stray. Yes, I saw his hand of mercy when I was sinking in the sand. When no other one could save me, I felt the touch of his strong man. Amen. Wow. Amen. Aren't you glad? Yeah. Amen. When you were thinking, right. you could feel the hand of Jesus reaching down. Right. Old songwriter wrote it. I love this old song. Stuart Hamlin or maybe one of those old time, I'm not sure exactly who wrote it, but wrote a song entitled When He Reached Down His Hand yeah. Yeah. for Me. Yeah. He had to reach way down yeah. for me. I was lost and undone without God or His Son. But He reached Way down yeah. for me. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad for the mercy of God. Oh, His grace is matchless. It speaks for itself. But I'm so thankful to God that He had mercy yeah. on my soul. I'm so glad that He has mercy on my life. Even as believers, if you watch how we've ignored God or failed Him or, or tested Him or tempted Him or left Him or, or got stagnant or backslidden or out of the way when He should have knocked our block off. <laughs> Sometimes when Christians fail, the Spirit of God makes you feel so bad on the inside that you just... You, you get tired of prayer. You can't even really serve him. You're waiting on his judgment to fall. Because listen. Mercy. That's what it is. Mercy is all about the judgment of God falling. And may I tell you that the judgment of God will fall. <clears throat> but the times we deserved it. When he winked at it and turned his head, spoke to us in our heart to change, to be different, Amen. to be above and beyond right. the call of Christianity, Amen. to be something that only God could make you to be. Luke chapter 23. <clears throat> How did they treat Jesus? You're about to just within a month, you're going to hear all about the crucifixion. They went beyond persecution. They went into our world standards today. Except today, they dismember the... They get mad at somebody, they cut all the <coughs> limbs off. They dismantle the bodies. <clears throat> Cruel. That would not happen to Jesus because of... The crucifixion was horrifying. <coughs> How did they treat him? They went beyond anger. 
that mob did at the cross. Terrible how he was treated. And how even in life, how he was fought against. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Today, they try to stamp his name out. The world tries to take God out of everything. And while we're worshiping Jesus Christ and their <coughs> crucified Christ <coughs> at Easter time, there's people worshiping a stupid Easter bunny. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. As crazy as Santa Claus <laughs> at Christmas time. Jesus deserves it all. Right. First and only place of the seasons. Everything else we enjoy by everything we enjoy is by His grace and by His mercy. As he was on the cross, Luke describes it in verse 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his garments and cast lots to gamble for the garments of Jesus. Let's go over to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 7. <laughs> Verse 51. Here's Stephen, the deacon, preaching a good sermon. You got to admire him. He's the one that was preaching to a great crowd of people and the Lord called him off into the desert to <laughs> preach to one person called the eunuch that was on his way back to Rome that was reading Isaiah about the lamb to the slaughter and Stephen got aboard his carriage and asked him so I'm reading the account of Isaiah and he said understand this what you're reading he said how can I except some man guide me right because the spirit of God does not guide an unsaved person they think they know a lot about the Bible all they know is they, is the criticisms they've heard about the word of God unsaved people don't read the Bible unless they're in a Religion that has a Bible that's taught and wrong, then they may pick up the Bible. But without salvation, without the Spirit of God inside, they can't spiritually discern what the Word of God is saying. All right. mm -hmm. The Bible said that Stephen took the same scripture, the, same, the very same scripture, and, and began at the same scripture, preached unto them Jesus. Now I see here in verse 51, I see something amazing. Stephen said, "Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. It's a pretty strong preaching, right? The Bible said, Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted and have slain them? which was shown before the coming of the just one of whom you've now been have been now and the betrayers and murderers. Boy, he's getting stronger, isn't he? Mm -hmm. You thought I was a hard preacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? <laughs> Who have received the law by dispensation of angels and have not kept it. Wow. You know you got the law right in your hand, but you've not kept the law. That's good preaching, isn't it? Uh -huh. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. They gnashed on him with their teeth. 
I think they need a lot of anger management. Right. But right yeah. I mean, you're going to jump on somebody and bite them. But he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Jesus came off his seat. Right. As he saw what was happening down on earth. They cried out with a loud voice and stopped and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. They cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. That's the apostle Paul. Witness. Clothes <coughs> of Stephen. As they stripped him. And laid him at Paul's feet. At that time, Saul was a murderer. Yeah. Can you even imagine the mercy of God to take somebody like Saul of Tarsus, right, and save him and make him such an about-faced apostle of Jesus Christ? Amen. That ought to demonstrate the mercy of Jesus like nothing else. They stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive, me, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. That's almost like Jesus, Jesus said. Right. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And there with the stones bouncing off of his skull. As he lay dead on a rock pile. He wasn't there no more. Right. Absent from the body present with God. Right. The mercy of God extends. Aren't you glad beyond death? That's the flight of the soul of a believer to his home. And when he said this, <laughs> I like this. Doesn't say he died. Right. It said he fell asleep. Amen. <laughs> Those that sleep in Jesus. Yes. Will God bring with him? Amen. I want to bring you back to the Lord's Prayer. We all can say it. It's memorized. The Lord's Prayer. Right after that Lord's Prayer, Jesus said, If you forgive those their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will forgive you. No. If you forgive not others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive yours. Right. We are commanded to have mercy. No. You're going to be tested by many. You're going to have decisions. Some of you may be angry before this day is over. It don't take much to get people angry nowadays. You understand right. that? Something don't go their way, they get angry. Somebody gets in their way, they get angry. Persecutions and tests and trials still come to believers. If you're not going through one now, one's on its way. Amen. You know why? Because God's going to test you. God wants to see what you're made of. God wants to see with what you will do with what you dished out and given. To whom much is given, much is required. If God's given you eternal life, 
He's given you responsibility that there's a lot required of you as a believer to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ and let the countenance of God. We can't even talk about love without mercy. Let's be the bigger. Let's be above and beyond. That's the way the world can see Jesus. Right. And he will receive glory, honor, and praise. I'm glad for his mercy. Let's stand.